from Barangaroo Studios, the AusBiz COB is the key stuff you need to know about the day in business and finance. Good afternoon. Welcome to the COB. A little bit different this afternoon. Uh, we are going to have a little bit, little bit more of an informal chat, but it certainly seems like the Trump trade has unwound somewhat, seeing the market down by about eight tenths of 1% on the ASX 200 as we head into the close. 81.87 is where we're at. Of course, we we're awaiting CPI data coming through out of the US tonight. Uh, there certainly has been some unwinding of those so-called Trump trades, uh, particularly bond yields still very much in focus. When it comes to our market, you've had the likes of Min Resources hit hard, Life360 sinking as well. We did speak to the CFO earlier. He's quite positive about their overall outlook. Uh, the big four all in the red. We had CBA's trading update today. Westpac down by about 2% as is NAB. And also a couple of other earnings, the likes of James Hardy, Light and Wonder, Aristocrat, Leisure. But let's get into it all and bring in our guest, Mark Garner from MPC Good afternoon. Markets. Good afternoon. So let's just start with the kind of, I guess, fading of that Trump trade. I mean, there was so much euphoria and now perhaps people just taking a bit of a pause. Yeah, I think Tesla was the real indicator there, obviously down about 6 or 7% overnight, um, but has rallied 30 to 40% since the... Uh, since the election, despite him and um, Rivi being named as the efficiency um, department today or yesterday. Um, so, look, overall, I think that Trump bump really didn't flow through to international markets. I think we've seen Asian markets be relatively soft, particularly in commodities be quite soft as well. Um, I think we'll start to see the US dollars um, fade um, as well. But, I mean... Obviously, we had wage price index today mm. and it was still 3.5%, albeit slightly lower than the expectation and, and still drifting off. But that's a lot, that's a lot higher than expectation. Um, sorry, than, um, than inflation. Yeah. Um, even CBA saying that their operating costs were up by 3% mainly due to wages as well. So wages is always a second wind for inflation generally. And um, we're starting to see that come through. So bond yields, I think the Australian, Australian two years, roughly 20 um, basis points away from... 2011 highs. Um, it's certainly at nearly at 12-month highs. Same for the long long end of the curve as well. Um, the Australian 10-year uh, bonds are only about 12 basis points from um, those you know those 2011 um, sort of highs as well. So we we are looking at you know everyone pairing back their rate cut expectations. Um, mm. We were always a little bit further along the line than uh, most, but. Um, even started starting to consider, you know, whether that's going to happen or not, because Trump is supposed to be inflationary um, from a growth prospect and possibly from the tariffs of trade war um, uh, prospect as well. Uh, but you know, and that second wave of inflation that happened in the sort of late seventies, early eighties, um, can really put central banks off kilter. Yeah. And um, yeah, we, I think uh, equities are probably in for a bit of a rough ride for the rest of the week, I would have thought, particularly mm. if we get um, um, even a mildly higher CPI number in the States tonight. I don't expect it to be much higher than yeah. expectation, to be honest. Um, however, you know, you've had a couple of hurricanes there and things like that, so maybe the sampling might be a little bit out of whack. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, let's get back to what you mentioned there about our inflationary pressures and also what we heard from CBA because there is, you know, and I was at the UBS conference this week, this growing cohort of does the RBA even completely miss the easing cycle? And Matt Common was saying today that Trump's policies are likely to be inflationary. So looking at that and then also looking at CBA's own profit, which, as you say, looks enormous, but pretty flat. Yeah, look, it was pretty flat. I mean, loans and arrears was actually a, a nice surprise given what ANZ and NAB's um, loans and arrears were were in their um, in their reporting. So, I think that stability with the CBA customers, I think, still seventy seven odd percent is uh, still funded from um, from their deposits, which is obviously CBA strength and why it generally trades at a premium. But um, I, I'm still in the wait and see camp with Trump um, because obviously putting in. Two very cutthroat entrepreneurial guys is inefficiency. If they come in and slash government jobs, I think we'll be we'll be needing more cuts. So, the growth um, in employment and the low level of unemployment in many countries, Australia and the US particularly, over the last few years, has all been in government jobs basically. So, if they come in with a machete and start um, and start cutting government jobs once they get in, there will definitely be need for more of a cycle, um, more of an easing cycle. So. I think just focusing on the inflationary part, um, Trump likes to chest beat, he likes to talk a big game, but 
you know, the tariffs, whether that comes through or not, or whether he comes to an agreement and it's just a threat, it's, um, you know, is another thing. So it's, I think the risks are really balanced here at the moment, and mm. I do, but I do think equities are at really vulnerable levels in the US uh, particularly because that optimism realistically, the rest of the world ignored it, and, um, and it's not necessarily justified. I don't, I don't really see... Um, you know, there's no economic number reasons. Like yeah. that last payrolls was horrible at 12,000 jobs. So, mm. um, so yeah, there's still things to be concerned about over there. All right, well, let's get into James Hardy because this is one stock that a lot of people have on their radar mm. as a potential tra Trump trade beneficiary. Shares up 7% today, a very good um, sort of trading update. Yeah, everyone had a pretty dour outlook for the North American and European um, division of the business. So. I think with those hurricane, obviously the hurricane trades, which um, you know, we've, we've gone with JLG, which had a, um, actually a pretty good update, AGM update today as well, uh, was up around about 5% at one stage. James Hardy was up around the 7% market at, at stages during the day as well. So, I mean, they are both very solid businesses um, and they do benefit from that, um, you know, that catastrophe repair work. So I think those two will do relatively well and particularly, um, you know, with... You know, with Trump being more pro-growth, um, you would probably expect to see building, um, you know, building start to drift higher again as well over in the states. So, mm. yeah, they, I think those two are very good picks here at the moment. Um, and then, um, yeah, and then I think we're leading into some agricultural stocks. Um, yeah, so you like um, Grain Corp. Yeah, Grain Corp's tomorrow morning. Mm. Uh, near record volumes is well is sort of where the rumours are. Um, mm. I speak to quite a few farmers. They've all had very very perfect or near perfect seasons so far so and grain crops a volume business mm -hmm. um has been bumping along at the sort of towards 12 month highs here um for quite some time it'll be interesting to see how it flows through because the last numbers were affected by that el nino and they were fair they were still fairly dour on expectations um moving forward because um that sort of scared the farmers off from planting but um it has been a very very good winter crop and mm -hmm. we're not looking at any sort of el nino less than 15 percent El Nino which is the drought conditions um till all the way through till July next year so see about a 70 percent La Nina chance which is those good rainy conditions which has helped um help the farmers uh with their with their cropping we don't you know uh, a heavy La Nina is not good either um mm. but um but I think yeah and that we've got elders next week as well I believe uh, around about this or I think Wednesday or Thursday next week so yeah. Uh, I don't expect them to have as good a result necessarily. Um, I think Grain Corp should be the real winner, but um, they're the two we're focusing on. What do you look at when you look at some big moves like Paladin yesterday? Is that sort of looking like a buy or do you stay away from big shocks like that? Uh, we get a small amount of Paladin in the portfolio. Um, we really just got leftovers. We, we sort of took profit early in the year. Um, those thematic trades can pull back really, really fast. So I think it's probably not a bad buying opportunity down here at the moment. Um, you're always going to have these really noisy movements with these um, you know, emerging commodity trades or thematic trades. But um, the bottom line is, is that nuclear obviously is going to get pushed forward with the likes of the MAG-7, which have got more money than any government in the world just about at the moment mm. um, so I would imagine that that thematic will continue uh, we did see uranium prices head higher but Cameco did the same thing because Adam Prom has done the same thing um, and, and reduced production guidance uh, over the last year um, that's actually been quite healthy for the uranium price overall and both of those are, um, particularly Cameco's has jumped back up again so this from a short term perspective I think it is um, I think it's a good buying opportunity and um, yeah, we, we may look to add uh, at, at stages, but at the moment that URNM um, ETF has got a high level of the Sprott physical, um, which will benefit um, a, and be a little bit more stable across the board than you know the swings and roundabouts of Paladin. But this is these are very extreme lows, and it is in production now. So mm. um, you know it, uh, I think it traded to a dollar twenty five pre-production yeah. overall, and the uranium prices were really roughly around the same spot. So. So yeah, it's one of those ones where sometimes you're gonna to have to close your eyes and block your ears with yep. these sorts of trades and um, and you know, don't don't be paying highs because um, it would have been it would be a fairly ugly trade if you'd paid around that sort of seventeen or eighteen dollar mark, um, and which was well, probably only a quarter or two ago. Mm. All right, Mark, always a pleasure, thank you. Thank you. Mark Gardner from MPC Markets. Now of course the stock of the day today was a 
aristocrat leisure. We had Henry Jennings from Marcus Today and Andrew Wallant from DP Wealth Advisory join Koshi on the call. So there's nothing to get worried about really with this result. I, I guess, you know, it's, we, we don't know if this is going to have any effect with Donald Trump, but you wouldn't have thought so in terms of uh, US gaming. Uh, Aristocrat is an Australian company, so uh, there is a little bit of that involved, but I can't see anything really wrong with this result at all. Uh, the market is uh, pushing up a little bit. It's, you know, it's had a fantastic run, let's yeah. face it. it. It's a quality business, and the result reflected that. Um, it was in line with expectations. Uh, I like it a lot, um, but you are paying for it. And I'm not talking about $64, $65 paying. I mean, obviously, that's what you're paying. But in the context of earnings, you're being asked to pay a pretty high PE, around 24 times earnings. Uh, so that's the thing. It's in line with consensus valuation. So it's, it's a hold at these levels. But certainly, any weakness at all, you'd be taking a very hard look at this because it's a quality business. And if the market is overreacting, but the business itself is still going, is under... Uh, the market is under pressure, but the, the business itself is going OK. That's the buying opportunity, but not at these levels. It's a hold. All right. Well, just having a look at where the market has finished, down by about eight tenths of one percent on the ASX 200. We have um, the top gainers. We're just talking about Paladin with Mark Gardner. It had a rebound today after that uh, big sell-off, so up about 7.5%. James Hardy, we mentioned, doing well as well. Megaport, Aluka and New Hope Corp. To the downside, Life360, we did actually talk to um, their CFO, so you can find that on osbiz.com.au. Mineral Resources slumping today as well, down about 7%. Tabcorp, Alcoa, Magellan Financial. Now, of course, the key uh, focus for investors tonight is that US CPI data. And then tomorrow locally, we have the October jobs data. We're going to be talking to Paul Brennan from Suncorp about that. Nick Twardell from ATFX as well will join us. We've got a raft of CEOs as well. We're going to be speaking to uh, Grain Corp, Scalare Partners, and uh, also Will Lopez from Catapult. So you know where to find us, 9.45 a.m. Eastern tomorrow, osbiz.com.au. We'll see you then.